Uh, my name is Pramod and I do work with Mr. Varsavitani. Some of you may know him. He's uh, the laparoscopic pouch surgeon for IBD patients at St. Mark's. And I'm going to, I know that this audience is well educated about the pouch, the mechanisms and all that. And so, but just to make my talk complete, I will start from the history of pouch surgery. In 1978, Sir Alan Parks and R.J. Nichols published this article in the British Medical Journal where they described the pouch surgery for the first time. It was groundbreaking at that time because patients who had their colon removed have now got a chance to live without a permanent stoma. Before that, there were various pouches which were described by people like Koch, but which required a stoma. And this was the first time where they took the small bubble and converted it into a neorectum or a new rectum as we call it and used the anal sphincters, your native sphincters, as the controlling point and that eliminated the requirement for a stoma. So after this, and you don't need to guess from where they were, so Alan Parks is from St. Mark's and R.J. Nichols thereafter took after him at St. Mark's. So if you're you're at the right place. If you want to get a pouch done, you're at the right place because this is where the pouch surgery was born. So after Sir Alan Parks and Nichols described this surgery, it has come a long way with a lot of advancement into it. One of the most important questions that our patients ask is when they come to the clinic, is it important where I get my surgery done? Well, it is. It is important. It's not us who are saying it. The evidence speaks for itself. This is evidence from the Cleveland Clinic in the US, where they have studied over about two decades more than 2,000 patients who underwent pouch surgery. And according to their results, as their workload increases, the pouch failures reduced. So it's been well documented and it's being proven over and over again, but this is one of the largest case series that is available at the moment. So Pouch failure is a phenomenon that you experience with time. There could be a multitude of causes which gives rise to pouch failure, from functional to organic causes like inflammation and pouchitis. So why does the pouch failure rates go down when the caseload increases? Well, it is, it is something to do with the surgeon himself as well. The technique will be perfected by the increasing workload. But also you need to realize that it is the development of this support network that helps these pouches to be salvaged. Over time, when we discuss about the pouch with the patients, we give them a percentage of around 10% pouch failure rate. But more than that, there is a, there is a quite significant percentage that comes with problems after doing a pouch, after getting a pouch done. And we do manage them with our supportive network. When I say supportive network, we have pouch nurses, support groups and so on, which help them to get over that problem. So the ultimate pouch failure rate, which we report, is much less than the patient who present with the problem. So when a center has a high caseload, the supportive network also develops with increasing funds and people getting involved and so on. And it is very important that this network, because in a technical point of view, when Nichols and Park suggested the first pouch, it was very technically demanding. They had to do everything with their hands, saw the pouch with their hands, with threads and all that, and it has come to a point where now we fire a couple of staplers and another one just to connect it. So forming the pouch technically is not that much difficult, but dealing with its problems afterwards is very important in pouch surgery. So when you're choosing a center to get a pouch done, it is very important to realize that that particular center is well equipped to manage the post-operative complications that you get. As I said, it may be organic, it may be functional. It has something to do with the technical aspects of the surgery as well. But more than that, how to get over those problems plays a big role in reducing your pouch failure rates. Has it something to do with the number of cases a patient has done? Yes, of course. It's been proven that a surgeon who has done more than 40 cases of pouches 
has a very good outcome rate compared to those who have done less than 40. It is something to do with the technique as well, but also I would say it speaks something about the center itself. A surgeon to do 40 pouches is a huge task and you cannot do it unless you have a specialized center because the IBD audit in UK recently reported that on average surgeons do two pouches a year. That is the number of pouches divided by the number of surgeons. So if in that case a surgeon would only do 40 cases in his entire career. But it is not so when you have high volume centers like St. Mark's you do a lot of pouches which improves your outcome. So from Nichols and Parks to laparoscopic pouch surgery, we have come a long way. What are the advantages of doing a laparoscopic pouch surgery? Number one is there is less scarring because you know in laparoscopy or what you call as a keyhole surgery, you make a smaller cut and then you put in instruments through those small cuts and do the surgery. So rather than putting a huge incision on your belly and handling all the bubble, it causes less scarring, both outside and inside. So, now the important factor is less pain. When your cut is small, the pain is less. And it also results in a better cosmetic outcome. And is it important? Yes. We do have a lot of young patients coming with IBD, especially ulcerative colitis starts in young age, and the first peak of Crohn's disease as well. So these young patients are very much concerned about the cosmetic outcome and laparoscopic surgery has done wonders in that area. Short hospital stay, you have a smaller cut, you have less pain and you're out and about early. You're not on the bed and your requirement for pain relief is much less so your hospital stay becomes less. Less adhesions, we'll be talking about adhesions later. Whenever you do a surgery it causes your bowels to stick together after the surgical procedure. It's, it's, a, it's a natural protective phenomenon where just like a wound healing, it causes scars inside and causes your bowels to come together. So this will give rise to chronic abdominal pain, obstruction, and sometimes even leading to pouch failure because these scars might go across your pouch and cause difficulty in evacuating your pouch. So laparoscopic surgery has proven to have less adhesions postoperatively. And for the surgeon, it provides a better vision because you have a camera inside the abdomen and you get a magnified view. So your dissection is well measured and uh, it's, you can do a perfect dissection with the magnification. Less sexual dysfunction. Now, when you do a surgery in the pelvis or anything to do with the rectum, there are these important nerves, the pelvic nerves which travel in the lateral walls of the pelvis very close to the rectum. So in any rectal surgery, we always warn the patient that there is a possibility you might experience sexual dysfunction, meaning uh, erectile dysfunction, loss of erection, or retrograde ejaculation. Your ejaculation goes back and goes into the bladder. So those are two imminent risk, but we usually say there is a one to two percent chance that it might be a permanent damage. But most patients do experience a temporary period of erectile dysfunction or retrograde ejaculation. And does laparoscopic surgery reduce this risk? We are still accumulating evidence to prove that. But on a theoretical basis, it should because it provides a better vision and better dissection. So the damage to these nerves are minimized with laparoscopic surgery. Ileostomy, some of you might have had this, some of you might be considering, yes, ileostomy has become a sort of a mandatory part of all pouches, but having said that we have experience with pouches where we have done without a diverting ileostomy, but the standard is that you need ileostomy to divert the fecal load after you do a pouch. As you can see, a pouch has a lot of joints in it where you, there are a lot of suture lines which need to heal with time. So it's always beneficial to divert the fecal load till the pouch heals and gains its function. And then in about three months time, we will reverse the ileostomy and you can have, a, have the pouch functioning. Has laparoscopic surgery 
help to reduce the morbidity? The evidence says it has. Again, uh, results from uh, the US, you can see the morbidities are less, abscess formation, stricture, ev everything has gone down with the use of laparoscopy because there is less tissue damage uh, because of less access trauma and it causes better outcome. <coughs> Adhesions. We have data from St. Mark's to prove that adhesions are less with the use of laparoscopic surgery. As I said, explained earlier, with the less handling of the bowel and the smaller incisions, the formation of adhesions between the bowel loops is, has been reduced by the use of laparoscopic surgery. Fecundity, another important question that patients do ask us at the clinics. Will I be able to get pregnant after getting a pouch done? Well, the answer is yes, you can, but there is a definitive reduction in the probability of getting pregnant. What they say is two to three-fold reduction in the probability of getting pregnant. As you can see, reported data, after 24 months or two years of trying, if you have an 80% chance of getting pregnant, after getting a pouch done, it comes down to around 20 to 25%. So it has been proven over and over again that there is a reduction in the probability of getting pregnant and recent results say, yes, the time for first pregnancy after laparoscopic pouch surgery even is increased. So there is a definitive increase in the time you need to get pregnant and there is a reduced probability of getting pregnant as well. But it is not a no you can get pregnant and you can give birth. Uh, we, we always say you need to get a cesarean section done because the damage that could cause to the pouch as well as the anal sphincters. But uh, the probability of uh, getting pregnant is less. What are the advances in laparoscopic surgery? So from Nichols and Parks to laparoscopy and now we have come to advancement within laparoscopic surgery as well. What we do at St. Mark's here is the single incision laparoscopy. These are the two fancy gadgets that we use for the surgery. So we have two modes of access. One is abdominally. I'm going to show some uh, pictures of surgeries. Uh, just want to make sure that everyone's okay with that. Yeah, All right. So we have the abdominal access with a single incision here. This is about a three centimeter incision, mind you. It's exactly where your ileostomy will be, or if you have had a surgery in the past, you have your colon, part of your colon removed, and you already have ileostomy, we will take out the ileostomy and we will just access through that hole only. There's no any other cut in the abdomen. So this is a three centimeter circular hole in there. And we put all our instruments, the cameras and everything through this port. This is the access from the bottom. So we have two groups of surgeons working, one from the top and one from the bottom, uh, removing the rectum and the colon, and then doing the pouch. So this is a picture of a pouch lying in the pelvis after dissection and creation of the uh, pouch anal anastomosis. And at the end of the first surgery, you will have an ileostomy in your, on the right side. And that's it. There is no other incision with single incision laparoscopy. So in three months' time, you come back and get it reversed. You will only have the one at your right iliac fossa, the small one. And we please ignore the one next to the belly button. This is <laughs> this is a this is a patient who had a different kind of a surgery, but we just want to show you the scar you have after the reversal of the ileostomy. And now actually we have a better outcome because we close it in what you call a purse string suture or we uh, close it in a circular manner which leaves you only a scar of the size of a five penny, five pence uh, coin. So cosmetically, single incision laparoscopy has done wonders in uh, pouch surgery. In conclusion, ileoanal pouch, as I explained, has evolved over the years from where Nichols and Park suggested to the single incision laparoscopy, and in the future we might be even using robotic surgery. Uh, and laparoscopic surgery has made pouch surgery more acceptable with regard to better outcome, less post-operative complications, 
and better cosmetic outcome. It is a safe procedure and needs to be done at centers with high volume, again stressing the importance of the surgeon factor as well as the supportive network that develops with a high workload. And specialized supportive care, again I'm stressing, is very, very important as much as the surgery itself for the good outcome of pouch surgery. Thank you very much. for repairing a fistula in a pouch? Yes. Well, uh, most of the fistula we approach from the bottom, that is uh, from the perineum, all right? Not from the tummy. So in that case, if you're asking minimal invasive, the big bracket of minimal invasive surgery, not laparoscopy, but we do have a new technique called the waft. It is called a video assisted fistula treatment. So we do have a, even a smaller camera than what we use in laparoscopic surgery. And we don't go in the tummy, but we do go inside the fistula track with a camera and do stuff to make it heal well, better. Uh, so it's not through the abdomen, we don't call it laparoscopy, <coughs> but yes, minimally invasive surgery as we do. We do the same thing inside the fistula track. Yep. Laparoscopy started in 1980s, early 1980s, but not with pouch surgery. They started with gallbladders, appendix, and uh, gynecological surgeries. Uh, but its evolution into pouch actually, I would say, started around 1990s, in the mid 90s. You mean the laparoscopic surgery or the single incision the one? Camera, uh, they well, it is well established all over the world, laparoscopic surgery uh, for pouch. But single incision laparoscopy is still in its infancy. I would say UK and few centers in Europe, uh, like in Denmark, they do single incision, but not many centers. Even in the UK, I think one or two centers would be currently doing single incision laparoscopy. Uh, 